Last night was a good night for uh, for Kenny Pickett, right? Uh, Steelers end up getting a win late over the Baltimore Ravens. He throws an absolute dime. They win. There's just, This is Mike Tomlin about his uh, rookie quarterback. I just think that we benefited so much from close proximity and evaluation process. I don't think none of us are, are surprised by what he does from an intangible standpoint. And the proximity to him uh, at Pitt really kind of gave us that comfort. Um. This is Kenny Pickett on the win. Yeah, it was just kind of, you know, extend the play a little bit. Wanted to keep my eyes downfield and and give one of our guys a shot. And we had a real similar play earlier to Najee like that, kind of extending, and he was down the left side. And, you know, we didn't hit it, but, you know, real happy we got him uh, when it counted. It's the same every time. I mean, it's just everyone's got to do their job, and, you know, i got to find a way to get the guys the ball and and get in the end zone. So, you know, it's, it's a team effort, group effort. You know, Stevie really did a huge job bending in there on that seam. Uh, biggest play of the drive besides the touchdown. So, you know, you never know when your number's going to be called, and Stevie stepped up tonight, huge force. Well, the first thing is they ran the football really, really well, right? So, and, and I, but I also agree with, with what Mike Tomlin, I, I mean, it's the reality of it is, um, and this is one of those things that's interesting about college football where, you know, so many of these, the, these schools – are in college towns. One of the benefit to playing in an NFL town, and this is the, the NBA uh, college basketball guys will tell you this too, is like NBA guys. They when they when you're in LA, when you're in New York, when you're in Chicago, when you're in some of these major NBA markets, you, you do have a greater ability to truly evaluate. You know, I mean, look, it's hard to evaluate a kid when you're coming in. And everybody knows you're a scout and you talk to people. It, it the, the hit rate on quarterbacks is hard because you don't always have a clear view of what you're getting. Let's, let's take Zach Wilson. Let's take Zach Wilson. You know, Zach Wilson had one great year with BYU. It was the COVID year. They did not play a particularly good schedule. Remember the big game they played that year was Coastal Carolina who was really good, but a much lower level team than who everybody else is playing against. So you don't really have as good a read. So it's, it's like, you know, you're dating somebody who you have no background research on none, which can be good, but they're also, you're not actually meeting them the first time you're meeting the representative of what they want to be. Are you, you know, Cause you don't know their baggage. You don't know who they dated. You don't know. I do think the Steelers have found their quarterback. And even if I'm not fully convinced, more importantly, they are. Cause they feel like they know who Kenny is and that's why they were okay with the investment. And now you got a head coach in Mike Tomlin who's doing Mike Tomlin things, right? Stop me if you heard this before, but he's never had a losing season and Dunn Perry going to have one now. in the who's searching for their quarterback. And that's actually a great discussion. I don't want to get to it in a second with you, Jay Stu, um, because you guys saw Baker Mayfield yesterday. Some good, not great. Was really good last game. You know, he's, I'll, I'll get to it in a second, but Baker, Garoppolo, um, Derek Carr, maybe Tua, maybe Tua. If, if Miami goes in, and get somebody. Um, and I want, I, I, I just, there are, there's going to be a lot of quarterbacks that like, you know, Foles will be out there. Hopefully he's okay. Right? Pretty obvious Carson Wentz is going to be on the market. There are, there's a lot of these kind of borderline used to be a starter guys there. And Pittsburgh will not be looking for that type of quarterback this offseason. Yes, uh, Jason Stewart. Remember that whole conversation when they measured the guy's hands and they had small hands, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. That whole conversation was, uh, well, those small hands didn't impact him in cold weather in Pittsburgh in, the, in college. And I remember there were a few people, maybe, maybe even you included, that were like, hey, December football is different. January football is different. Um, so I think maybe for a day or two or maybe a week or whatever, we could put aside the small hands thing in the cold weather. Could you, are you willing to do that with Kenny Pickett? I, I am. I, here's the thing. Like, it's a lot like, it is a lot like a relationship. There is, you're not going to meet a perfect human being. They don't exist. And what you have to do is you have to 
process that there's going to be a couple of things that you don't like, "Mm, I could do without that, you know? But overall, if you're overall, if you're in love, you you overlook it. You're like, yeah, all right. So she snores like a freight train. Like, but she's charming, beautiful, and super into me, and we're aligned on other things. Like, all right. That's the thing about Pittsburgh is like, they have, he doesn't have the greatest arm, maybe. He doesn't have big his hands. But he's a dude. He's tough. He's smart. He shows up every day to work. He, he, he does some things with his feet, which are better. And so you live with it. So I, I, do I think it's going to be an issue? Probably. Probably at some point. There'll be a, hey, why can't he change arm angles on throws? You know, like you saw Herbert, I think, like last week, you know, that little sidearm deals. To, like those guys with those huge hands. And long arms, they can do crazy Mahomes type stuff. But a Mahomes wasn't available. You know, it's like, well, it's not a Pat Mahomes. Like, well, Pat Mahomes isn't available. You know, Justin Herbert wasn't available. You're Pittsburgh. You're never going to draft in the top five of the NFL or top 10 of the NFL draft. Like, not going to happen. Mike Tomlin's too good a coach. It's too good an organization. So, considering where they drafted, they got a dude. Yes. Uh, yeah. Jared, Jared Goff had that same, the same thought pattern, right? And he's also been playing. Extremely well. Now, obviously, he's indoors. indoors. Yeah. Yes, he's indoors. So that helps a little bit. We'll but see this weekend. Yeah, they'll play. They're playing uh, to get into the playoffs, right? So we'll it's, see. I, by the way, that game being moved to Sunday. Remember last year we had this too, where it's essentially a playoff game. So I don't know what's going to happen, but that's going to be a great watch. Lions, Packers, Sunday Night Football. Oh I my. think it's uh, the uh, great angle here is that like. Matt Stafford, you know, you don't know. His future is uncertain. He says he's not going to retire, what have you. Uh, Baker Mayfield with the Rams now. That the Jared Goff has played so well over the last six to eight weeks, you could be like, man, maybe the Rams should not have given up on uh, Jared Goff. Huh, huh John? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think anybody thinks that. No. I. <laughs> and it's funny, it's funny, Doug, because I heard at least three to four people on radio talking about the same thing we talked about about a month ago, which is, would you have traded in the Rams Super Bowl for, and 90% of people were like, no, you take the Super Bowl. You take Matt Stafford in that situation. So I think it was the right move for the Rams, and I'm happy for Jared Goff that he's playing well in Detroit. Um, Yeah, I mean, like, I, again, like, it's, I, I hope people understand there's, like, two different levels of football. What he's doing is great at that level of football. Playoff football, I, you know, Sean McVay didn't think he was good enough. Sean McVay was extremely frustrated with him. He didn't fit what he wanted to do. And he thought Stafford was a better fit. And it's pretty hard to argue that he was wrong. You know. And then again, we're sitting here going like, we're assuming that Jared Goff wouldn't have gotten hit, wouldn't have gotten hurt. Granted, younger, so the likelihood of injury or back injury might be less, but it's still a violent game. And behind that makeshift offensive line, because they went all in, and you had, you know, a long time great vet retire. Um, I, you know, we're, we're acting as if Jared Goff would have been a hundred percent healthy, and Matt Stafford would would have had he stayed in Detroit wouldn't you know wouldn't have been healthy, and that's that's that ain't right. That ain't, that that's not right.